everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning September 13th, 2021. Just as a reminder, I do typically record these ahead of time. So we will see if anything happens during this week as we get closer before maybe even this launches. I will always come back and touch base with you. I also want to address the clock in the background. Okay. <laughs> there is just a tiny mechanism keeping the hands of the clock moving and sometimes it does kind of bounce around um, and then gravity kind of gets it and it might bounce back. However, in the video that everybody saw that, which I think was the September 11th, 2021 daily video, uh, it was a little weird what I was talking about and how it moved right at that moment. I will admit that, but just so you guys know, <laughs> your comments have <laughs> had me like laughing because it was a little spooky and I totally get it. All right. So we do have something exciting to bring forward for this week. And it is this idea of um, an alchemical shift that is happening with the world, okay? So what's really happening is that we're in this space where things are, so to speak, having to sort of burn down so that we can get clarity. Clarity about ourselves, clarity about the world that we're in, clarity about what we contribute to the world that we are seeing. This is exciting in that I think, at least it brought me comfort to realize that we're in process. It's not so much this thing of the world, you know, is ending and, you know, oh my gosh, and we're all just so horrible and all of this. It's not bad. <laughs> it is, in fact, a part of the process. So we are coming through all of these so that we have, what I'm feeling is so that we have these events to sort of bounce off of. Everything that's occurring in the world is teaching us something about ourselves as individuals. And we're also seeing this incredible time where there's a lot of self-centeredness and self-righteousness. And that too is part of the process here. Yeah, so coming through to the other side of that, they are warning us that this could be a painful process from a human perspective. And it can get us into this place of feeling hopeless, wondering why, how, what in the world, you know, all these things. And I've heard a lot of, and even I've had this perspective, like, man, we are in dark times. We are in dark times. But the message is coming through saying, but there is another side to this. There's, you know, once we come through this fire, there will be this time of reevaluation. Yes, it does go into this idea of the phoenix rising from the ashes. Now, if we are not doing our individual work or if people are doing the spirituality thing with a sense of self-righteousness, you know, if you come at it from that angle, you're not doing the real work, you're not actually bringing this universal light, this universal energy through you and being a conduit for that, then, you know, we're going to stay in this kind of, we're going to stay in the fire. We're going to stay in the awful part of it. So what we need to be doing is a lot of self-realization, self-evaluation, shadow work, however you want to see that, but breaking away from things that are no longer good for us. Okay. So that might be a vice. It might be an addiction. It might be, you know, someone from your past who just always creeps up in your thoughts. And then you realize, you know, again, that's just a way of someone feeding off of your energy. And it's usually people who can't find their own light. So they are feeding off of someone else's. Or maybe this is bringing up some belief you have about yourself. For example, let's say you're hung up on an ex and you just can't stop thinking about that person and maybe even fantasizing about the day that you can come back together. Why, this is what you gotta stop and do. Why are you hung up on that? And it's gonna start very surface level. Well, my heart is broken and I just want the pain to stop. Okay, that's understandable. But what other beliefs do you have about yourself? Why did you think that person was the one when clearly they're not? If they were the one, they'd be here. That's not true. Oh, there are the narratives around that out there. We gotta watch that. Hang with my example here. Do you perhaps think that this is the only love option for you? Are you tired? Do you feel like you keep 
bringing in toxic partners that drain you and you just can't think about the idea of going out and meeting someone new. At least this person is comfortable. I already invested enough time into this relationship. I don't want to let it go, right? So that is what we're having to look at and understand. And that might even take you even deeper into some sense that maybe you think you're unlovable and that this person was the one person who kind of showed you some attention, right? You feel me? I mean, this could go on and on and on, and it depends on your situation. This could be a job as well where you just don't fit in. And every day it is a struggle to play a narcissist game or to deal with sociopaths or people. <laughs> There's another message coming up around that and why we're seeing so much of it. Again, it's all part of this moment, the alchemical process and the shift that we're having to go through. Okay. So let's go into, I was going to say about the job, you know, having to face off with all these people and uh, feeling you know, because they're telling me that a lot of people in order to survive end up kind of, kind of acting like those people to reflect back. And now it's like this sort of disease that's spreading, right? But it's like from a mental perspective and how everybody is strategizing and playing games with each other, you might decide it's time to move on. But you need to look at why you stayed as long as you did. <laughs> I'm right there with you. I've, I've made that mistake myself in the past. You know, why'd you put up with it? What does this mean about you? As far as what we're seeing suddenly with cluster, I know we're kind of generically gonna call this cluster B personality disorders. I am not a psychologist, so check with an expert around this. And even experts, I find it a little annoying that they're kind of pretending like it's not there. <laughs> and they're, cause I, I get it. They don't want people who haven't studied this stuff to just go around throwing labels on people and then it's a, you know, a stigma and we don't get anywhere, right? Um, and maybe it will, um, detract people from getting therapy or, or what have you. So I understand it, but at the same time, there is a message coming through here that and I'm, I'm hearing the word poison. This is, please don't go into like survival mode, the drama mode, okay, all this stuff. It, it, we're not trying to go down the road of conspiracy theory necessarily, but we have not been eating very good food. Our water isn't always clean. The air is not clean. There's different kinds of pollution that isn't readily acknowledged. Okay, and some of you know what I'm talking about, but unfortunately, I can't say that much in these videos. And I know a lot of you in my audience, I have the greatest audience, I really do. <laughs> I know a lot of you out there are like, well, why don't you find another platform? I wouldn't have the same reach. It's tough. This is just where we are. This is the gig. And that's it. So in order to have the most reach with these messages, I have to be on the platform where people are. So, you know, bear with me, I guess is what I'm saying is I kind of have to speak in code or whatever. <laughs> but there, there are a lot of things that have been put. Yeah, I'm feeling this. We're, we've been convinced that certain foods are it. I don't want to call out a certain... <laughs> a certain fast food chain um, that everybody on YouTube is just going crazy over. Um, you know, it's making it cool to eat these fast food items that really are filled with chemicals. Or it's great to go off and have this drink that's nothing but, you know, again, chemicals and just horrible things and sugar and, and all of that. So that's one thing. And I'm not sitting here trying to be like the food police, but I can give you an example. Growing up in the 80s, in Ohio, everything was about convenience, okay? Everything was about convenience, so it was frozen foods. And that was just what, at least people in my region, it's just what they did. If you had to go out into your garden and get food, you were poor and you had to grow your own food. I'm telling you, <laughs> wacky, and it got worse in the 90s, okay? With the diet cookies, oh yes, oh yes. Um, you know, and being on a diet, I remember watching a talk show where the woman's like, I've been trying so hard to lose weight and you know, I'm doing exactly how I'm supposed to. I'm having my bagels in the morning with cream cheese. And that was considered a healthy breakfast guys. <laughs> it was, it was, see if you can find that clip, I couldn't tell you which talk show host it was, but this woman is sitting there trying to go by the best advice of the day. And people are drinking diet sodas and whatever chemicals and things that were being put into these uh, sort of low fat snacks 
what have you. A lot of them were being pumped up with salt instead to make, the, I don't know, to compensate for the flavor, I guess, or whatever. But the point is, is that the more we all tried to be healthy, the worse the food became. And now here we are, if you're my age, how many of you are having troubles with your hormones? How many of you just seem to have cravings and you don't understand it? Or, you know, they're, and there you're coming here now and saying the mechanism has been offset. The mechanism has been offset. I, I know a lot of you are wellness experts out there, nutritious, and you'd be like, yeah, that's what we've been saying this whole time. But <laughs> you have to remember that this is how a lot of us, again, especially if you are around my age or my age, um, this is how we were raised. I know my body's all messed up from that. And then what, there's a psychological thing behind it too and what we do to one another. This is one example where I remember, again, you know, the whole idea was if you're overweight, that you're dumb, lazy, worthless, you are the natural target for bullying. And if you were a fat kid and you got bullied, well, it's your own fault, right? That was the narrative back then. Think of some of the movies from that time, how there's always a fat kid that gets, um, you know, beat up or whatever. It, it's a serious thing. Because it's, it's a mental dysfunction here, okay? So I think the message here is that because of all of this uh, sort of pollution, and you add that into the fact that we're going through this phase where we are in the drama, we are in the self-righteousness, we are in the division, we are arguing with one another, we are trying to be right, we're not going to function in our higher consciousness. Part of that is the process, part of that is a need for awareness, okay? So no, do not be feeding your children nonsense. I knew somebody who used to literally give her kids, I kid you not, a bag of candy. And that was their breakfast. If you think those children were able to go to school and learn at full capacity, I mean, come on. No, but it's deeper than that. It's not just dulling our intelligence, right? So like, cause you just feel kind of dull and lethargic and your body's not revved up with the proper nutrition. And of course kids get less exercise these days. It's not just that, it's what the chemicals are actually doing to our DNA structure. Hi scientists, I know you're gonna sit there and scoff at that, but uh, doctors, I mean, come on, weigh in here. We know that there is definite permanent change that's going on here and if you didn't know that maybe science needs to catch up okay because that is part of a huge problem that is going on we are constantly poisoning ourselves with the choices we're making in food but that's not all people okay there is something that is uh, the message i'm getting here again i'm not a doctor i'm not a scientist okay fine but here <laughs> i'm gonna give it to you anyway what I'm feeling is for us to understand the, they're saying chemical reactions on the brain. And we know this, right? Like you say, there's something addictive about these French fries. Yeah. Okay. But then we're in this place where people, you know, they're the cruelty to one another too. Right? So it's, it's messy. It's, it's a big message here, but that is coming through for us to watch what we're doing. Now, how does that tie into personality disorders? Again, there's no science there. I'm a spiritual practitioner. I'm just bringing a message through, but it is changing our structure. It's changing how our brains function. Then what happens? People act out. They act out on their children. Children don't feel love. They feel abandoned. God forbid if they experienced abuse. And then you can go a couple of different ways. You can go to the codependency route where you're so afraid of getting more abuse. So you'll just be the little servant to someone. Just don't hurt me, right? I'll do whatever you say. Just don't hurt me. Oh, you find value in me because I'm being here and, and just serving you again? Okay, that makes me feel good. At least you're not hurting me, right? Or I could go the other way of I'm going to shut down my empathy because my empathy is a dangerous thing. And then what, however that morphs, morphs into narcissism, um, histrionics, uh, sociopathy. I know it's antisocial personality disorder. I just think that we've gone too far with that term antisocial to, it makes it sound cute. Sorry, I'm not being, I'm not having a clinical discussion here, obviously, <laughs> but there is a correlation there and a connection. 
Now, what does this have to do with our higher consciousness? Well, all of these things factor in how we're functioning in these bodies um, is in fact affecting the energy we put out, obviously. So take it easy with this process. Look at what you're doing to your body, okay? If you can, yeah. and again, if you're like somebody who's a smoker or something like that and you've always been trying to quit, don't be too hard on yourself, okay? <laughs> do what you can, get the proper support, um, especially if you're working through some traumas, God forbid, but if you are, now's the time to get with somebody who is a trauma specialist. I always say, be very discerning about who you go to. Do not go to a narcissistic therapist and talk about narcissistic abuse because they will gaslight you and tell you it never happened, okay? So, or that it's like not even something that exists and you're just making it up because you're a whiner, <laughs> right? You know, you want to be careful with that. So be working on ourselves in that way. As far as the outward world, um, it's hurricane season. I mean, there's going to be all kinds of things going on. Just get ready. There's, it's, it's going to start feeling like, I feel like how it was in 2020, like the spring of 2020, where it was like, I don't know how many of you hung on the news. Now, I kind of have to, you know, I tried to do it in a very spiritual responsible way as I watch the news being discerning about what I'm taking in but I do have to understand what narrative is being put out there given what I do here and what might be affecting someone somewhere in the world right um but I do feel like that kind of energy we're going to be coming into that again but it's okay it, it, what's happening isn't okay but you need to be working on you as an energy generator as a love conduit, okay? <laughs> you need to be working on yourself. And as you guys know, I'm always right there with you. Um, just a human being as well. I just happen to have a blueprint that's all about spirituality and philosophy and creativity and bringing that stuff through. You know, whatever, I guess that's what I chose. <laughs> but I need to take better care of myself as well. Um, I think I've shared with you guys, obviously I run my own business and I, I run a YouTube channel. I do personal readings. Um, I do courses. I, I went to doing my own bookkeeping because it was more of a hassle to send it to somebody than to just do it. So I do my own bookkeeping. Um, everything I do is on my own and I am doing a complete rewrite of my novel, um, setting goals for myself. I want that rewrite done and query letters out to literary agents by October 31st of this year. If you knew what shape this manuscript was in, you'd know that's a big deal. <laughs> so it's a lot. And so when it comes to food and nutrition, what do I usually have? Whatever, I don't go, I don't always go to fast food here and there. If I'm out and about, I'll, I'll swing by and get something. But like, that's not, that's not a usual thing for me. But frozen foods, I grew up on them. And yeah, I get like the organic ones, but I think it's still not great for you. <laughs> it's still, it's still processed, right? Somehow. And I don't know how it could be organic if it's still, um, you know, I, I don't know how that works. But anyway, I'm going to try to be more mindful and let's all just make a pact with one another to support each other in this. If you're on board, if you're like, listen, Michelle, I'm not there. I can't be talking about food. Don't make me scared of my own food. Like I can't, I can't. It's fine. I, I totally understand that. Be where you are. Now, let's see what else we have going on here. Um, leveling up. There is this leveling up. You know, we're talking about ascension all the time. We're talking about, um, you know, raising our frequency, raising our higher, you know, getting into our higher consciousness. But we're not always talking clearly about what that process entails. On this channel, I often tell people, my whole thing is do not spiritually sidestep. Okay? Where... You don't go through the whole alchemical process for you. Part of that process is feeling your feels, right? <laughs> feeling your anger, feeling, you know, it, it, the idea here is just to not get stuck there. Okay. So there's that. We're going to go on to the cards. But before I do that, I do want to remind you guys that I am doing uh, a monthly individual sign video. Okay. So it's one video, all 12 signs, and I am experimenting with the weekly version of that as well. So every week, each sign gets a little a little reading, okay? But I'm watching it carefully to see how my audience is responding to it. If you're not responding to it, if you're not watching it, you're not liking it, why am I making it, right? <laughs> the whole idea here is that you feel like you're getting value out of whatever's coming up in messages, okay? And that you're getting value out of this channel. 
So I don't want you to feel like you have to go check something out and it's a waste of time for you, right? So if you like that kind of content, make sure you get over there, check it out. I'm watching the views on it and I'm watching the likes, okay? Also, if you want to do a meditation challenge, do some of this deeper work. I am now building up a whole library over at gumroad.com slash angel souls. I just recently put up Raziel, who's sort of the magician angel, and he's phenomenal to work with during this process. Alchemy, oh yes, okay, that's the angel to work with. So get on over there and check it out. Let's get onto the cards. All right, so let's just get a little bit more information ground the information into the practical into the 3d reality there's a card sticking out right there balance yep that's what we're doing guys this is no joke <laughs> we're in the process and i know it's messy it's scary it's not going to be fun but there is a real danger and i've done this myself of getting trapped in victimhood okay or getting trapped in um powerlessness or vengeance wanting to get, you know what I realized? <laughs> I, and it was so subtle. I had to check myself because I was like, oh, I want to do this, this, and this. And then I was thinking about, oh, I hope it's really successful. Well, success is nice. Why do I want it to be successful? Well, because I want to feel accomplished. I ha we all got to check our egos, right? But I think it'll make me money. And if it makes me money, then I can finally get out of my apartment and feel, because housing has been a scary thing. I don't know if you guys are out there renting, but I'm renting and it's scary. It's very, very scary. And I just keep thinking if I have a house, I can be stable and I'll feel more at home. And God knows I could have more room to film. Hey, I could get some bokeh in the background, y'all. What if I have some distance? <laughs> I can't because it's such a small room. But, you know, just stuff like that. And then it snuck in there. I had to keep digging for that truth. That's what we're doing. The balance is about finding the truth. But I dug a little deeper and I was like, because if I'm successful these people are going to be irritated because they never saw value in me. You know what I'm saying? Like they rejected me. They didn't want to have anything to do with me. And if I'm successful, that will show them. How many of you have had a moment like that in your life? The second I realized that and went, oh, what am I doing? No, no, I'm not putting it. That's ridiculous. I'm not putting energy into that. You know, I sat down and I wrote for four hours straight and it felt like a half hour. The creativity was just flowing. Those are the tricky energy drains that we don't even realize are there. That's where we're talking about, you know, being balanced for you. So if there is a situation where you never got any justice, and I understand wanting the justice and maybe it'll come, but waiting for that is a real energy drain. So try to take a second, again, it's okay. We're all human. And the people who say, I'm never vengeful. They're liars, okay? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know that they're liars, but you know, they probably, we all had to go through a process. Nobody gets off the hook with this, right? That's why I find it very suspect when someone's like, I just never have any hard things happen to me ever because I'm a good person. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? So see where your energy drains are. What is taking... Again, you know, maybe you're too focused on an ex and that's blocking out new love or um, you're too focused on why do these coworkers treat me like this to even just go, why am I putting up with it? I don't fit in here. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go do something else. All right, guys. What else we have? We have new beginnings. Yeah, this is what this is all about. Remember I said right from the top, we're trying to get through this process. Now, this would be an individual thing. New beginnings for the world. We're still in for times and events that absolutely shock us. Um, so it shouldn't shock you that it shocks you, <laughs> right? <laughs> that made no sense, but we're just gonna keep rolling. But your new beginning, we have to start to come through this, this process of something outside of me has to happen or something beautiful has to happen for me to feel happy, okay? I was just giving the example of a house and would I really like a house? Yeah. Um, it's just time. <laughs> it's just time to stop sharing walls with people. But housing market is absolutely insane. And I don't know about you guys and where you live and your part of the world, but I absolutely refuse to give somebody double what the house is actually worth right now. Okay? Like, and that's dumb. Okay? <laughs> so we're not doing that. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and not be happy because I don't have a house. 
Does that make sense? Um, I'm not going to sit here and be unhappy because there are miserable people out there who want to attack each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, we can't allow, or we have to start learning how to um, not deflect. That's not it. Process. You know, just process it and let it flow away. So this is really kind of, in order to get to that new beginning, it is looking at where where is the ego satisfying thing. And that doesn't have to be bad necessarily, but where does it start taking our power? That's the question. Okay. Playfulness. There we go. So taking a lighthearted approach to things. You know what this feels like? If any of you guys have ever, um, have you ever just had like a bunch of loose ends and you're like, oh, all of these things would literally, each one would take me five minutes, but it all feels so overwhelming because I'm just, I'm in the strict, I'm on the strict schedule and oh, just sit and actually do it. I mean, oh my gosh. And you get all wound up and caught up and next thing you know, nothing gets done. <laughs> right? But if you just take a playful approach and you go, let me just take that five minute thing. Great. Now let me take the next five minute thing. Great. Now let me straighten up my living room a little bit. Let me do a little dusting. Let me throw some laundry in. Let me sit down and do this. Let me do, when, when you kind of take a lighthearted approach, again, I got to learn this too. Things flow a lot easier. And not only that, but don't you just feel good at the end of the day when you're like, oh, all that stuff that's been hanging over my head, it's finally done because I didn't take it so seriously. Didn't see it as a huge block. I just took it bit by bit and surrender. I'm telling you guys, stop trying to control things and stop trying to control one another. You know what I'm talking about. There is a big old narrative out there that is just insane. And it has given people almost like permission to hate one another and to act like they're above it all. You know, can I give you a dumb example? I would like to have a discussion about pumpkin spice. I like pumpkin things. Okay. I just had my first pumpkin spice latte of the season yesterday. Okay. Listen, I do not appreciate being called basic. No, pumpkin spice has all the spices. How are you going to call that basic? No, I have a t-shirt. It says pumpkin spice, all the things. I'm passionate about this. But again, silly example, but let's pull that back. How dumb is that? How dumb and petty? Really? You're going to judge people on what kind of coffee they drink? You don't have anything better to do? Comment down below. I'll give you a list of things that you can do that'll better yourself. That we all have to be doing right now on a spiritual... <laughs> On a spiritual plane, if you want some ideas, okay? But yeah, we have to surrender this idea. <laughs> and even that is, there you go. There's a, an example of me trying to control people. Not really trying to control, but being a little self-righteous. <laughs> you know, like, I judge you for judging me. Like, it's, it's, it's messy and we got to catch ourselves, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Example in play. No. I thought that wanted to come out, but it did not. She said no. I went back in. All right. By the way, if you do want a personal reading, I am still doing them. And I, the Akashic Records readings, those have been amazing. You guys are just swarming in for those. And I do offer different time frames. So there's 15 minute, half hour, and an hour. Um, typically with the Akashic Records reading, I wouldn't really pull cards unless you ask me to. Um, but we can easily do, like at the half hour is probably the sweet spot for the Akashic Records reading, okay? Could you do a 15 minute? Sure. You know, we're just not gonna go that in depth. Is one hour a little too long? Depends on what you're asking. But typically, yeah. I mean, imagine you sitting in meditation for an hour just exploring the Akashic Records. If that's something that you want, we can certainly do that. Or if you wanna split it up and you want some of it to be visiting Akashic Records and bringing information up and some of it being Oracle card reading, however you wanna do it. I don't have that as an offering on like a technical choice, right? I'm sorry, I'm just really busy. <laughs> I, it's what, see, that's one of those loose end things where I could just go in there and put that in there, but it, I've got other things that are kind of piling up. So just if you want an Akashic Records reading, just go ahead and order whatever reading and make sure you put it in the submission form. Are we good with that? I'm sorry, that's sloppy, but anyway, okay. <laughs> oh. See, this is interesting. Okay, so what it says is, uh, romance angels are helping you. Dear guardian angels of my soulmate, thank you for preparing my soulmate and me for love, for giving us the motivation to make helpful life changes, and for arranging for us to meet. 
Thank you for helping us recognize each other and have the courage to say hello so that we can eventually delve into a truly intimate relationship. What's interesting about this is that, again, we, we cycle around toxic well, we call it toxic. It's not toxic. They're correcting me. We keep cycling around in lessons, right, that we we can now let go of. So we can make room for love. Can people transform? Anything is possible. Is it likely? Eh, I'm not feeling great about it. You make your own decisions, but I'm not feeling great about it. This would be that kind of thing. It could even be friendship too, where somebody's like, I know we have fallen out. I know it's always like so self-centered, but I'm done with all that now and I'm going to be a better friend. And they're trying, but you know, when they, when it gets to that point in their process to actually look at themselves and come on through, they get scared and they have to go back and, you know, they, they slide backwards, right? So that can lead to more heartbreak. It could also slide you backwards. You feel me? So be careful. Be careful. If you know someone to have very uh, uh, behavior that's not in alignment with what you're comfortable with, like you guys just aren't on the same page with your morals and values, that's okay. It doesn't make either one of you good or bad. It just means it might not be a good match. There's a reason why I'm saying this because I don't want people like seeing this card and going, oh, yay, that person that thank God I got out of my life is coming back and yay, we can be together again. Um, maybe... <laughs> I don't know what these sound effects are. I don't know. Maybe I should make a compilation of all the weird faces and noises I've made and just <laughs> put it in one video. But this is opening the way, especially if you're into a, like a higher vibration than you were previously, you might find that relationships are not working anymore. You might find that friendships are ending, but it's opening the door for more to come on in. They're not gonna be perfect, maybe not, but just surrender to that process and give yourselves permission to be playful and, and to enjoy connection, true, authentic connection with other people. Now, if you're in the place of your process where it's like Jesus in the desert, right? Like if you're having that moment so that you can have your clarity and find yourself, there's that self-realization then do it and don't feel bad if you're not feeling social. Okay, longest video ever. We're gonna leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.